ready. So Eric was telling us a little bit about the history here around Culpeper. And he's taking us on the favorite road. And he was explaining that these homes on the left probably Anybody? belonged with that house there. Yeah, that was and probably these, the, the master house. These, and these were the slave place. quarters. Wow. Someone's actually living in a couple of them. They have electric. One room houses. The stone walls were all the stones they cleared from the fields, but they used them in the war. Wow. Our friend Eric from Kraken's Garage gave us a tour on our motorcycles of a Civil War trail near Flint Hill, Virginia. We traveled along Benvenue Road, located between Route 211 and Route 522. Eric took us past Benvenue, a historic home and farm, once part of a 3,402-acre estate. Benvenue was built between 1844 and 1848 and was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1979. I like to hear the history. Wow. This is beautiful. Can you imagine building that wall with those rocks? All came out of those fields. Wonder. Wow. Wow, this is beautiful. We are on Benvenue Road. What are those fruit trees over there? Yeah. What, well, what kind, I wonder? Probably apple. Hmm. There's an old brick structure here on the left. Stone. Wow. The stone, stone, stone house, too. Stone house. No, wow. no, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Little oh. cemetery. Oh, I missed that. Oh, those are is it grapes? Those grapes, yeah, grapevines on the left. Oh, grapes. okay. That was the tollgate farm. That looks like an old log cabin there. Wow, a lot of history on this road. Beautiful views too. Wow, there's that oh, one up there. Yeah. Pretty trees. Plantation. Slaves. Hmm. Plantation owners. All part of the American history back in 16, 1700s. I wonder what they grew on these farms back then. Same thing grown today. Wheat, corn, oats. Grains, all sorts of grains. Mm -hmm. This is Zachary Taylor Highway. Flint Hill, he's gonna stop here in Flint Hill and tell us something about someone in Flint. It it was beautiful. It is beautiful. That's a that was a neat road. Oh, it's just beautiful. You got, you, it's short, but it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Flint Hill, Virginia. That looks like an old tavern. It is. You're looking at 100-year-old homes and churches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The story behind Flint Hill, um, this whole corridor that we're riding through is, was kind of uh, John Mosby, who was a famous guerrilla fighter for the Confederates. He was very much frowned upon during the Civil War because they were still operating on the mentality of the British way of fighting. You both line up, you start beating on each other when one line falters, <laughs> call on the cavalry and hack them up with swords. And that was the way they fought. And anything else was unethical. Right. Colonel John Mosby was a guerrilla fighter and he's like, heck to the no on that. I'm gonna sneak around the back, I'm gonna beat on him. When it starts to get ugly, we'll bounce and roll out of there and then come at him from the other side. So he was very much hated by the Northern troops. This was uh, about a chaplain who was in the Confederate Army. And uh, his name was Albert Gatlin Willis. He was offered a chaplain's pardon to avoid a hanging ex execution by the Union soldiers. His response was quite remarkable. He had been serving with Confederate Colonel John Singleton Mosby's Rangers for several months. Though born in a wealthy Virginia family, Willis chose to pursue a life of gospel ministry 
and was, at the time, war broke out, studying to be a Baptist preacher. Willis had been looking forward to seeing his home as he headed toward Culpeper, Virginia on October 13, 1864. Mosby's men enjoyed frequent furloughs as their lightning quick hit and run missions allowed them to return to their homes and farms more often. But Willis's horse came up with lay near Flint Hill, forcing him to stop the local farrier shop at Gaines Crossroads. Suddenly, Willis and his un unnamed companion were surrounded by troops from the 2nd West Virginia Cavalry and taken prisoner. The two soon learned their fate. One of them would be hanged. That order came from General Ulysses S. Grant. Whoa. As retribution for, for Federals, Mosby's had killed. Grant's order required that one of the Confederates be hanged without trial, quote unquote, for each Yankee killed by Mosby's men. Speaking with the two young men separately, Union Brigadier General William H. Powell informed them that they were to draw straws to determine which man would die. Powell also informed Willis that he will he could claim a chaplain's exemption if he chose. Willis had not been ordained and did not believe he deserved such consideration. Aww. He refused Powell's offer. The two prisoners were brought back together in order to draw straws. Willis's unnamed companion drew the short straw and burst into tears, crying, Aww. I have a wife and child. I am not a Christian, and I'm, I'm afraid to die. Upon hearing those words, Willis spoke up, I have no family, I am a Christian, and I'm not afraid to die. Mm. Due to Willis's willingness to stand in the stead, his companion was released. Within moments after praying for his execution, Albert Gatlin Willis was hanged. Oh my goodness. There you oh. go. Today his remains rest inside a white picket fence in a tiny gray yard at Flint Hill Baptist Church in Flint Hill, Virginia. Okay, so we found the Flint Hill Baptist Church. This is where Albert Wills is buried. I'm somewhere, uh, because of his actions, I guess they did this morning. Outstanding. Greater he love hath no man yeah. than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. And if you listen to Eric's story, that is exactly what Albert Gallatin Willis did for his friend. Thank you for your service.